Recently, I had the opportunity to walk from one side of the Sydney Harbour Bridge to the other. Now, there's two reasons why I did this walk. One, because when I was a very little girl, my family did the exact same walk. The second reason is because since 2006, I have been completely and utterly terrified of bridges. For me, managing a bridge is a challenge. And the Balti Bridge in particular is determined to kill me. <laughs> there is nothing you can do to make me be convinced otherwise. I just know that one day I'll be driving over it and it will just tip me over like a Mabias strip and throw me into the Yarra River. The Narrows Bridge is also waiting to get me. It's just biding its time on a foggy day. I just know it. The only way that I manage to deal with my fear of bridges is by engaging in a superstitious behaviour. By having with me a teddy bear. <laughs> For some reason, I am firmly convinced that bridges are not going to hurt teddy bears. <laughs> More recently, I've discovered that somehow the songs of Robbie Williams are very useful too in helping me get over bridges. I like to think of myself as a rational person. I like to think of myself as a skeptical person. That I keep my mind open, but not so open that my brain falls out. And yet here I am, completely and utterly subject to this superstitious behavior. Superstitions fascinate me. And in fact, it became the focus of a thesis I did here at this university, here at UWA. One of my favorite researchers, Stuart Vicey, talks about superstitions, and he says that it is often considered to be natural phenomena that is attributed to supernatural or occult reasons, or often it's beliefs that should be based upon an understanding of science, but somehow we attribute it to external forces controlling us, fate. More often than not, we look at superstitions and think of them in terms of luck. We try to gain good luck and avoid bad luck. In my research, I had the opportunity to look at cultural influences on superstition. Crossing one's fingers, for example, might be seen as something that will help you get good luck. And yet many of us might just do it out of force of habit. It loses its power. We say to each other, oh, I crossed my fingers for you. But we don't really think it's going to have that much of an influence. Walking under a ladder, for example, might not be something you avoid doing, doing due to bad luck, but more because you don't want a bucket of paint to land on your head. Some of the more famous research done into superstitions include that by B.F. Skinner, where he looked at superstition in the pigeon. In fact, that was the name of the paper that he wrote about superstitions. He discovered that with operant conditioning, offering pigeons food, they would often dance in preparation before the food came to them. And somehow they seemed to believe that this behavior would bring the food to them. And that's one of the interesting things about superstitions. You can believe what you like, whether or not be teddy bears protecting you from nasty bridges or the particular dance you do bring you the food. It's when you start taking them into action that we can become concerned. We can all be subject to superstitions. We can all find ourselves overwhelmed by the irrational, and particularly if we are in groups. But how do we deal with this? And when is the line crossed? When, as Stevie Wonder says, does superstition not become the way? And what's the harm is something that I like to look at. When do we start questioning? When do we start taking a stand? And of course, the actions of superstitious people can be varied. For example, urology is the belief that drinking one's own urine or neurotherapy is somehow going to be beneficial to your health. Of course, this is misguided thinking. The science behind urotherapy is completely flawed. When we expel urine, we are regulating the body, we are getting rid of electrolytes, also, the practice is, in my opinion, completely and utterly gross. And that's something you should ask yourself when people make claims which are not based upon science fact. 
is it due to perhaps the placebo effect? And one of some of my favourite researchers in this field include Simon Singh and Edzard Ernst, who point out that the misguided thinking behind such practice like urotherapy and other alternative medicines could possibly be due to the placebo effect. When it becomes even larger, when superstitions become endorsed by entire countries almost, and it becomes a question of human rights, people can take a stand. For example, Leo Igwe is a human rights activist from Nigeria. One of the things that he does is attempt to fight superstitious beliefs which result in the persecution of children and of women in East Africa. Stepping Stones Nigeria is a group that tries to provide support for children who are being killed, injured, cast out of their tribal lands due to the belief that they are witches or wizards. One particular powerful documentary, The Witches of Gambaga, looks at women who have been persecuted due to the belief that they are supernaturally cursed. Unfortunately, this is not a problem that is related just to Africa. Even in Papua New Guinea in 2013, concerns about women being persecuted due to the belief that they are witches continue. So what do you do? When is superstition not the way? Well, personally, awareness is one way to take a stand. When it becomes a question of human rights, when it becomes, as Stuart Vice he says, a question of your time, your money, your health, that of others, of your loved ones, then you have to start thinking to yourself, how can this be dealt with? I personally take steps in small ways, anything from helping people like Leo Igwe by getting his message out, joining the Amnesty International, or acknowledging that some superstitions can be challenged, such as celebrating Black Cat Day on August the 17th. Black cats are often persecuted due to the belief that they are cursed. <laughs> I moderate myself. I look at myself and say, well, my belief in teddy bears is helping me get across bridges, but can I find alternatives? Sometimes singing the teddy bear picnic helps when I'm going across a bridge. If Robbie Williams ever does a cover version of the teddy bear's picnic, I'm certain I'll be well and truly the most confident woman in the world, but I'll wait for that. And finally, realising we can all be fooled. We can all have these quirks. We can all have these little elements of irrationality within us. Recognising that the dancing pigeon can just as easily be us is something to keep in mind. Superstition ain't the way, as Stevie Wonder said. <laughs>